Hi guys, Adam here. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create one of these charts um, with horizontal bars instead of vertical bars, because that may be something that you want to do, especially for the asymmetry stuff, um, where you could have bars going to the left if the left is dominant and bars going to the right if the right is dominant. But in any case, let's do this. So I'm only going to do one chart and not go through them all, but I will provide you with actually a file um, if you're going through this course with uh, all these charts in um, as horizontal bars. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on here and I'm going to change the chart type. And I'm going to want it to be a horizontal bar chart. And I'll click enter. And this is nice um, when you have a lot of athlete names because they don't take up, I mean, since they're going horizontally, you can see more athletes. It takes up less space. Um, the bars aren't as thick, but that's okay. And then we'll notice we have another bar here, and that's our average line. That was our average line before, these orange bars. And if I click on one of them, or it doesn't matter, click anywhere, I go to change series chart type. I'm going to want to change this to a scatter plot with straight lines and markers. And it's automatically going to go on a secondary axis. And I'm going to click OK. And this is not what we want. And the, de and the data for this is actually different than the data for a normal bar chart because there's an X and a Y value now. But this is the way that it has to be done. If someone has a different way, let me know. Um, but So what we need to do is we need to pretty much figure out how to get this in X and Y values. We don't have any Y values for this right now. So we're going to go back to our graph data and do something similar to what we've done before. And we need to, we want the X values to be our average values, and we need the Y values to be some standard set of Y values where we can set the Y axis to be a specific um, range. And I'm going to use 0 to 100, and you'll see what I mean in a second. So I'm going to go to my graph data here, and we're going to add another series to this graph. I'm going to call it dummy. Because this is a dummy y-axis. Um, and the way that we're going to do this is we're going to apply a similar logic to what we've done here. Um, not here, but here. Where if something's blank, we don't care about it. And if it's not, then we there's a value to it. So we're going to set our range first. So the first two values have to be our range um, that we have. And the rest of them just have to be somewhere within that range. So I'm going to say equals if... If this, this is, um, I guess this is, well, this is for chart one. I don't really know. Maybe I'll just do with the name. If that, if the name equals blank, comma, then we want it to be blank. But if not, then we want the value of 100. And I'm going to close that off and click enter. And I'll always, just, just because, I'll do, if there's an error, let's just make it blank. So, if error, it's just the way that I'm, I've conditioned myself, even if it doesn't matter. So now this value is always going to be 100. When there's one person, that's going to be 100. And I'll copy that and I'll paste it down. And when there's a second person, the value will always be 0. That's my range, 0 to 100. And all the rest of these, it doesn't matter. Um, it has to be somewhere between 0 and 100. I'm just going to choose 50 because it's right in the middle. So I'll copy that, paste it down. And again, we're saying if something's blank, so if there isn't a person there, it won't count. Um, so there we go. If there, if that's blank, not, uh, blank, or if the person's blank, make this blank. If not, then make it a 50, and I'm just going to drag that down the rest of the way. And remember, uh, just in case you haven't seen other videos, we're dragging it down to um, 179, and we're using 179 in all of our equations. And I hate how this pops up. Okay, so now we have our dummy uh, y-axis, if you will, and we need to do the same thing that we did here to make it an automatically updating y-axis or else things will get kind of crazy. So we've done this offset function um, from previous videos, and I'm just going to copy it and paste it here, and I'll call it dummy, just like we've done before. We're going to use the name manager. So 
all we're going to do now is instead of G, instead of looking at G, which was what average 3 was looking at, we're going to look at O, which is the column of our dummy variable. So I'll go O to O to O and click enter. And now we should see our values show up here. Now the last part um, of this, of setting up this axis, is we can copy this. I copy that formula. Whoops. And I'll go into my name manager. Again, this might appear in different places depending on the type of PC. Um, if you have a PC or a Mac um, and your Excel version uh, may differ. And I'm going to create a new range. We already see all of the ranges that we have here um, for our dynamic graphs. And I'll do new. And oh, it already knows. Uh, yeah, sure. We'll call it dummy. And I'll paste in my formula. Oops. Click OK and click Close. Now we just have another named range in there. And now if I go to my team dashboard here. So this is our first graph and we're looking at average values 1. I'm going to go right click, select data. And if I go to average and edit, now we have an X series X values and Y values because it's a scatter chart, scatter plot. And for the y values, we're going to do equals graph oops, equals graph data, the name of our sheet, exclamation point. That's how we name our sheets um, when talking with Excel. Uh, and one just random note is if your sheet name is two words, you have to put little quotes around it. Um, so I try to keep my sheet names to be one word. Uh, that's why they, they look the way that they do. Um, so graph data dummy. So we're naming our sheet and then the named range. Of that sheet and that's dummy and we'll do here we, have, we need graph data exclamation point and get our values that we created in the last video or maybe two videos ago um, for the average values and that's chart AVG 1 because we're on our first chart and I'll click OK and click OK and now what we see is we see this line kind of horizontal I mean vertical <laughs> and that's what we wanted because um, we inverted our chart so now I need to set this range and I'll set it to a static range the axis that is the y-axis we'll set it from 0 to 100 because that's our min and our max values and I'm clicking enter and you notice on the right hand side it says reset that means these are static values they will not change and now I can just format this line. So I'm going to click on the line, right click, format data series. Um, sure, I want there to be a fill, and I want it to be maybe like a light type of grayish thing with 50% transparency, let's say, and um, I don't know, 1.5 width. And then the last thing that I want to do is take away the markers, because we see that little orange marker on the bottom there. It's not actually the last thing that I want to do, but none went to the marker for this line and selected none and now i just want to remove this axis because it is meaningless so i'm just going to delete it and now we have a horizontal bar chart with an average line or any line that you care about and this line and the bars are dynamic in that we can take a different test and we'll get different results. Um, and you'll notice other things are changing. That's not a part of this video, but you know we can see some things. And this chart is also the reason why we did everything the way that we did it was because we wanted the chart to be filterable by our table, also. So we can select a test, and we have a table up here. And if I just wanted to select um, the forwards, for example, in this table, um, now we're only looking at the forwards here. And I mean, you still switch tests and see their results and things like that. So I hope that this video uh, was helpful. If you do like horizontal bar charts, and um, and yeah, this is the last level up video in this series. So I hope you've had a good time, and and yeah, I'll see you in the next series.